Hello everybody and welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video. My name is Ethereum and this of course is Monster Hunter World. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different than I normally do. I wanted to take an in-depth look at the hellish fiend Valhazak. He's one of my favorite new monsters in Monster Hunter World and I just don't see a whole lot of him right now in the community. So that was the introduction to Valhazak. But before we actually go down and fight the monster, we should look at the surroundings in which we fight him in. As a hunter, it's really important to know what it is you're fighting and where you're fighting it at. Those are two pieces of the puzzle. The fight with Valhazak will actually take place in four zones of the Rotten Vale. The first zone, which you can see here, is Zone 12. It has several pools of the mysterious blue liquid that damages you when you walk into it. The next area we're going to face Valhazak in is Zone 14. This area is much more open, and it only has one hazardous pool of the mysterious blue liquid. It also contains this giant dragon skull, which many believe to be a skull of a Dalmadur, which is the largest elder dragon from the series to date. Many Monster Hunter veterans claim that he has crossed over the ocean to the New World to find his final resting place. Much of his body actually makes up the Rotten Vale itself. I'm not going to touch too much more on this subject as I feel like it hasn't really been fleshed out enough to really cover, but let's move on to the next area in which we fight Valhazak. As you continue to push through the Rotten Vale, you'll eventually reach Zone 16, which is the nest or lair of this Elder Dragon. You don't really see too many nests in Monster Hunter World. Most of the nests that you do come across are generic wyvern nests, with one exception being Valhazak. A major bonus for this creature having its own unique nest is we get to learn more about it from just looking at its surroundings and where you fight it at. Valhazak's nest is made of bones and flesh. These are the things that he covers himself in to intimidate other monsters and any potential threats to himself. And while Valhazak is an elder dragon, he does seem to prefer to be alone and only surround himself with weaker monsters. And that covers the main three areas in which you're going to fight Valhazak. He does go to Area 9 as well, but we're going to skip over that for now and go over some of the more useful items you're going to find in the environment and some of the interactables you can find as well. First, we're going to go over the locations of several null berries in the environment. These are extremely useful items in this fight as they will cure the half-health blight the Valhazak inflicts upon us when hitting us with attacks. The first three shown here in this video are actually in Zone 14. The first one was between 14 and 16 where you enter his nest and the other two are right here next to this pool of mysterious blue liquid. The next two being shown are actually in zone 12, also near pools of the mysterious blue liquid. While this liquid seems to hurt us as hunters, it allows plant life to grow and thrive.
Zone 12 also contains three Vitality Flowers, which restore health. These are super useful when trying to replenish the red part of your health bar after getting hit. As with many other areas in the game, Area 14 has environmental hazards for the monsters themselves. If you fire a stone or any other projectile at these dragon fangs, they will fall down upon anything below them and do massive damage. While on the topic of environmental hazards, there is something dangerous to hunters as well. These pools of blue liquid drain our health very rapidly. If you get knocked into one of these after being attacked, it's a very good chance you're going to die. That pretty much covers the environment in which you're going to fight Valhazak. We didn't cover Area 9, but by this point in the game when you fight Valhazak, you should be well aware of the hazards in those areas. Alright, so we're a little bit closer now to actually hunting the monster himself. Let's go over the Hunter's Notes. According to the Guild Notes for Valhazak, he is a grotesque Elder Dragon that inhabits the deepest part of the Rotten Vale. He uses the Fatal Vapor of the Vale in what appears to be a symbiotic relationship. For useful information, they say that once you've become tainted, inhaling the Vapor of the Vale causes your health to drain. Head for areas where the Vapor is thin, and if you do get tainted, do your best to get rid of it. That's the hint to use the Nullberries. On the physiology page, we have some useful information. His weak elements are dragon and fire, relatively weak to ice, not so weak to thunder, and pretty much immune to water. For ailments, he is weak to stun and blast, and can be susceptible to poison sleep and paralysis, but not very much. He also has several breakable points, including his head, his front claws, his belly, and his tail is severable. Alright, so these are the rewards for Valhazak. As you can see, some of the more rare items are, of course, his gem. The fangs are extremely rare. I've seen a lot of people on Reddit saying that they have not come across any of these after multiple kills. So, just be on the lookout for those things if you need them for weapons or armor. Alright, I think that about wraps up the research portion of this video. Let's go take a look at the monster. So this is Valhazak, just stomping around, gallivanting, looking all majestic and regal and evil, as he does. As you can see, he's not instantly hostile like some monsters. As you get close to him, you can see this effluvium aura that surrounds him and almost looks like fur on his body and his legs and like his chest area. He's also got these layers of flesh drooping off of the spikes on his body. Looks really strange and kind of demonic in a way. He also has these fake yellow eyes that are a little bit more intimidating than his real red eyes, but once you kind of notice that the red eyes are his real ones, he just kind of looks less intimidating altogether. Once you engage Valhazak, he lets out this powerful yet weak and wheezy at the same time kind of roar. It's really strange. Attempting to show off the hitboxes for these teeth that can fall down on Valhazak. You can see the first one missed because it barely missed like the actual graphic of his wings. But when I fire this one, it just barely touches and deals the damage. When Valhazak's on the ground, you can see a little bit more into his design. You can see the second jaw that he has as he's opening his mouth. Um, so I found some concept art. This is what he looks like without the, all the flesh and the effluvium all over him. And then this right here is what he, it's kind of how they got the design for the extra jaw. You can see that it's just like an extension of his regular jaw, but I believe it's more for intimidation than anything else. It's actually a lot like this real fish called a stoplight loose jaw pictured here. It's very possible the mouth region for Valhazak was based on this fish. I did mention that you will fight Valhazak in Area 9, so I figured I should show it in the video at some point. So here I am chasing him into Area 9. I picked up the fire torch pods on the way in to show off a helpful tip here. If you fire these into 
the clouds of effluvium, it'll actually disperse it for a short amount of time while the fire is there. Alright, let's move on to the next important step of actually learning how to hunt a monster. Let's look at his moves. Valhazak has about 11 different moves that he can use, a few of which I actually lump together, uh, such as his forward charge and his forward leap. I feel like they're pretty close together, but let's take a look at some of these and see how they actually work. This is what I call the 180 tail bite followed by a tail whip. And this following move is what I call the slow walking effluvium blast. He will fire this in about a 60 degree arc and then walk slowly as he does it. So here's a better angle of the Effluvium Blast. As you can see, if you're stuck in front of him, you're almost guaranteed to get hit from this. You can actually roll through it with the invincibility frames, but the damage is applied first and then your health is halved if you are hit with it. Um, he follows this up generally with this forward charge, which can suck and kill you if you're not very careful. One last thing to note is if you're wearing the Vitality Mantle, it does not actually stop your health from being halved if you're hit with this move, so please watch out. He also has a 3 bite combo, which you can exploit for time to drink a potion, sharpen your weapon, move to a different position. There's a lot of lag time here. He does have a forward charge and a forward leap move. The charge is much faster than the leap, but the leap is often followed up with a swipe attack if he lands directly next to you, as seen here. Here's another move where he will drag his face across the ground in about a 60 degree arc. A lot of swiping attacks with this monster. And oftentimes he will roar right next to you and then do this belly flop move which will spread out a burst of fluvium. And finishing up his melee moves he has this double tail swipe combo into a claw attack. He does have one other breath attack where he will arch up on his hind legs and then shoot a blast of effluvium straight into the floor. He does have one other ability where he will also get up on his hind legs and start to absorb the effluvium in the environment. After he does some of his blasts and belly flops where he exudes effluvium, he'll actually lose this aura around him. This is how he gets it back. As you can see, he's got a lot of the fog around him. And when the fog is around him, his attacks may actually deal more effluvium damage to you. When he attempts to use this ability when in an environment that doesn't have effluvium like Area 12, he kind of just stops. He doesn't get any buff from it. If there are creatures with effluvium, he also will absorb that from them, killing them in the process. Whenever Valhazak is weakened or hurt really badly, he will retreat to his nest. Um, this is where you will find him sleeping. This is the only zone that he sleeps in, so make sure to bring your bombs. One thing to note in this area in particular is there are some effluvium charged gyros. If they get too close to you while you are setting your bombs, they will accidentally hit Valhazak if they swing on you. This will wake up Valhazak, so watch out for that. A few helpful tips here. Always watch your spacing, especially in multiplayer. Me and my friend Taylor kind of got ourselves trapped in a corner. This is a tempered Valhazak, and this blast will almost one-shot you unless you have Vitality Gems in. Valhazak can also be interrupted from these blasts with flash pods, so make sure you have those. If you're diligent and patient, you'll be down in the sky in no time. And while not a particularly hard Elder Dragon, I've seen a lot of players cart on this monster just because they're not careful and they haven't paid attention to what his moveset is. But if you stick with it and take advantage of the openings for your particular weapons, you're going to kill this monster relatively easily. Both he and Nergigante are some of my favorite monsters to fight in Monster Hunter World. I really hope they add a couple more new monsters in possible DLC packs in the future, as I'd like to see more monsters designed in the same vein as these guys. When Valhazak is down and out for the count, you can actually get a way better look at his design than when he's moving around. You can see all these spikes all over his body that hold the flesh onto him. 
And on the places where there was effluvium aura surrounding his body, you can now see these scales that are very Kushala de Aura-esque, meaning they could be a distant cousin to each other, possibly. Here's just a quick picture of both the alpha and beta sets of the male and female armors. I'd like to thank everybody so much for watching if you made it to this point. Um, let me know what you liked, disliked about the video, and I'll try to do better in the future. The rest of this video is going to be footage from a hunt, so enjoy that if you would like to. Um, otherwise, you can stop right here.